Welcome back to the second part of our cohort analysis tutorial. Just to quickly recap, in the previous video, we learned that a cohort is a group of people who share a common attribute within a specific time frame. And by doing a cohort analysis, we can group these people based on similar attributes and monitor their behavior over time. Today's tutorial is all about how cohort analysis can help subscription-based companies track important metrics. A subscription-based company charges customers a regular fee, also known as recurring fee, to use a product or service. For example, you pay a monthly fee to stream movies on Netflix, Prime, or Disney+. Plus. So what are the key metrics a cohort analysis can track? Retention and churn are two key metrics used to measure the success of a subscription-based company. Retention refers to the percentage of customers who continue to use the service over time. Churn, on the other hand, refers to the percentage of customers who cancel their subscription within a given time frame. Now, there are different ways to calculate retention and churn depending on the business model and time frame being analyzed. Here are basic formulas. Retention rates can be calculated as the number of customers at the end of a given period divided by the total number of customers at the beginning of the period multiplied by 100. Churn rate can be calculated as the number of customers lost in a given period divided by the total number of customers at the beginning of the period multiplied by 100. So churn and retention are basically opposites. So churn can also be calculated as one minus retention rate. Now, this tutorial will show you how to perform a simple cohort analysis, calculate retention and churn rates using Excel functions, including dynamic array formulas. The approach will be similar to the one we used in the previous videos. So let's dive in. Please subscribe if you haven't, and don't forget to click the like button. Thank you. Here's a dummy data showing subscriber details. The ID, plan, subscription date, cancel date, and amount. This is an Excel table, but I've turned off structured referencing to have shorter formulas and the flexibility of using cell references. I explained this process in the previous video. Now, the first step is to group the subscribers into cohort using their subscription date. And the function I'll be using here is the EO month function, which returns the last day of the month. So start date is the subscription date in column C and month is zero. So it returns the last day of the selected month. Close the bracket and enter. Cool. Now listen closely. Note that some subscribers do not have cancel date indicating that they are still active and are yet to cancel their subscription. Now, to work out how long each subscriber stayed active in months, we'll take the cancel date in cell D3 minus the subscription date in cell C3, then divide that by 30. This is because we're assuming that all months have 30 days, okay? I'll round the results to zero to get rid of the decimals. So wrap it up with the round function. The number of digits is zero. Enter. Now we don't want to mess up our results by including active subscribers. So we'll use an if function to handle that. So check if the cancel date is empty. And if it is, return active. Now, remember to put it in double quotes because it's a text value. If it's not empty, then return the results from our calculation. Okay, enter. Cool. Now that the data is ready, we can prepare the cohort table. I'll be using dynamic array formulas for this. Dynamic array formulas automatically spill into adjacent cells. So the first step is to display the cohort in a column. I'll use the unique function for this. Array is column F. Enter. Duplicates have been eliminated. Now wrap it up with the sort function. So it's in the right order. Cool. 
Okay, now use custom number formatting to display the month and year only. Press Ctrl 1, Custom, and select the short month and year format. Okay, next, use the county function to count the number of subscribers per cohort. Range is column F and criteria is J3. Add the ash symbol to reference the spill range. So these are the number of subscribers that subscribed in each month. Next, I'll use the unique function to extract the number of months each subscriber stayed active in column G. Now wrap it up with the sort function and use the transpose function to convert it into a horizontal range. You can fill the range with black color and change the font color as well, just to make it look pretty. Cool. Now use custom number formatting to change the appearance. Press Ctrl 1, custom, click on general and type month, add a space, all in quote and add zero. Okay. Now these are still digits and can be referenced in our formulas. Now use the county function to count the number of subscribers that was lost per cohort. Criteria range one is column F and criteria one is J3. Add the ash symbol to reference the scale range. Criteria range two is column G and criteria two is L2 with the ash symbol to reference the spill range. Close the bracket and enter. Now let's take a step back to understand the result. Column K shows the number of subscribers acquired in each month. Let's focus on January for a moment. 34 subscribers made their first subscription. In month one, February, four canceled their subscription. In month two, which will be March, none of the remaining subscribers canceled. In month three, another one canceled and so on. Now let's shift our focus to February. The four subscribers made their first subscription. In month one, which will be March, none of them canceled. Same applies in month two. While three canceled in month three and so on. So in February, the total number of subscribers that canceled four. And that's from the cancellations in January cohort. I hope you get the logic. Now, the same applies to the remaining months. And in the last column, we have the number of subscribers that are yet to cancel from each cohort. So their subscription is still active. Now, let's calculate retention in absolute terms. So I copied the table, including cohort and subscriber columns. Retention measures the number of customers who remained active during the period. And now to calculate retention, take the number of active users at the end of the previous period and subtract the number of churned users, those who canceled their subscription during that period. So K18 minus L3 and copy across and copy down. F2 to check if they are well referenced. Cool. Now let's calculate the retention rate. Retention rate is usually expressed as a percentage because it lets you compare how well a company is keeping its customers or subscribers over time, regardless of the size of the customer base. So K18 divided by K18, press F4 to lock the column reference and copy, cross and copy down. Now, by using percentages, you can see at a glance how well the company is doing with customer retention and compare it to the previous month. And by using conditional formatting as well, you can easily identify patterns and trends. So, highlight the data. In the Home tab, Conditional Formatting. Select any preset from color scales. I think the red one looks good. Cool. Now, a high retention rate suggests that subscribers are happy with the service or product and are likely to continue using it, while a low retention rate indicates that there may be issues with the product or the customer service that needs to be addressed. So the next step is for us to calculate the churn rate. 
Now we can easily calculate the churn rate from the retention rate. So churn rate equals one minus retention rate, copy across and copy down. Let's apply some conditional formatting here as well. A high churn rate means that the business is losing subscribers at a faster rate than it is acquiring new ones, which can lead to a decline in revenue. And by analyzing the factors that contribute to churn and implementing strategies to reduce it, businesses can improve customer satisfaction and increase customer loyalty and ultimately grow their business. And that's all for today. I hope you found the video useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Please subscribe if you haven't and don't forget to click the like button. Thank you.